Oh, my mouth. Right. Good morning. We are at Spirit Wood Shop, and I am fixing to cut out on my CNC machine here a scripture in wood. And after I cut it out, I would like to try my best to explain to you a little bit about what this scripture means and why it might be important to you. Alright, this scripture is called Psalm 103.12. And this piece of wood right here is my little pattern. I previously cut this out, trimmed it down to its actual size, and I put this on my piece of wood that I'm fixing to cut. I have a little hole drilled right in the middle. That is where I start. That's my origin on my CNC machine. So I put it where I want it on that piece of wood and make a little mark right there. And the, the reason this is good is because, and I hang this up and keep it, this piece here, because I can find a piece of wood and I can readily put it down on that piece of wood and see if it'll fit. If it might, and then I can I can clamp it, get it like I want it, and I can lay it down there, position it, and I can say, oh yeah, this won't hit the clamp. This is a good size. I make my mark here, and then I run the CNC machine and cut out the scripture in wood. So here we go. We're just going to do this. It's not going to take too long. Uh, let's see, I gotta find out if I got the right zip drive in there, and I do. You see here, there's another thing I do, is I write on the back of my, I guess I'll call this my pattern piece, I write on the back where that is on which zip drive, and that is Red Cruise 2, and that's labeled Red Cruise 2. Find that, stick it in there, and I know that I will find that particular program at PS 103-12 on my zip drive. So here we go. Let's bring it down and let's uh, get this thing positioned on the little pencil mark that I made, which is about right there. Drop it down and we will and I have it positioned exactly over my pencil mark. And now I'll set my uh, XY and my Z. Boom, boom, and then boom. And now it's ready to find. And it was PS 103.12, and that's right here. So I move down to that and start it. This thing should cut out here in a few minutes. Just watch this machine and watch it go to work. Alright, we are finished. It was about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. And uh, I like to cut these twice, so I will cut it again. And the reason is, this is wood. Wood has fibers in it. This is a carbide bit. 
and uh, it, what it does is you run it a second time, it cleans it up a bit because this is wood. Some woods are cleaner than others. By the way, this piece of wood right here is a piece of black walnut, one of the finest woods made by God that um, is um, in, the, in the United States. I don't know if it's in any other country, but uh, I know it's here and it's a beautiful wood for carving and uh, so I call this scripture in wood um, and that means script you know that means writing and scripture is writing and uh, the Holy Bible is known as scripture so this is scripture in wood and I'm going to continue to finish this plaque so that uh, you can see uh, how I do it and what it's good for and uh, when I come back from my coffee break I'm going to try to endeavor to tell you why this scripture is important and why it could help change your life or make you more peaceful or happy or productive uh, all the way around. Okay. okay, I've finished cutting this thing out twice with the CNC machine and here it is here. Now this is my little method that I thought of to make a stand for this because these things, they're almost too small to hang up. I envision this being on somebody's mantelpiece, being on their desk, so forth and so on. You could hang them up, but uh, this is my little cheap method. I got a 2x4 here and cut these 20 degree angle pieces out of it on the table saw. It's 20 degrees. And that gives it just about the right... Um, angle that you can read it while it's sitting like that so basically all I do is take this cut this out of scraps two by four and uh <laughs> cut a little piece off of it basically and just glue it to the back and uh, I don't found out you don't have to clamp it or anything just put glue on it and set it where you want it and kind of push it down a little bit and just let it go and it'll glue up without any clamping at all and whenever you get through you've got a little stand that will hold that piece in place and you haven't spent any money other than your scrap wood so that's it right there that's very easy maybe you can come up with an easier way or but that seems to work quite well so far okay Okay, one other thing I like to do in this process is I sanded this with about 100 grit sandpaper, you know, and knock the dust out of the letters and all that, but I like to get a razor blade. And you know, one of the methods of furniture making is they have a scraper that they scrape the wood with, which actually makes it actually better than sanding. Uh, but what I do is get a little razor blade. These are quite cheap. You can't do a big piece of wood with this, but for a small piece with a razor blade, you can you can scrape this with a razor blade, and uh, you can really put a high polish on it in just a few seconds. And uh, sometimes you can actually go at an angle on it, you know, to cut it. And I've already done as much as I need to do. I just wanted to show you this technique. So that razor blade's real stiff. And this now is, I don't think you can see it, but I can tell you right now, this is at a, this is at a, a very high polish right here from scraping that. So I'm going to glue this back thing on it, and then I'm going to either put clear coat on it, possibly I will uh, actually... Uh, I got another technique where I make the letters black, but this, this is quite readable right this, like this on this black walnut. Okay. All right, here's one right here that I finished in another kind of wood just to show you what it looks like. If you want to put black letters on it, I've got another video, or I'll do another one to show you how to do that. But there's one right there done in China Berry. And um, that's my work table. And see, there's the thing glued to it. And I usually put the reference of where I got it on there. So if somebody comes along and gets it, I can make a note. 20 degrees is what I put in that little block. 
And uh, now the part, the other part I was going to tell you is what in the devil does this mean here? As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Okay. Well, you know who he is. So far has he removed. Well, everybody knows who he is. He is God. Because God's the only one that can remove our transgressions from us. But as far as what this means to me, and it has many meanings. Some people get can go on about it a lot more than I can, but it's about our relationship with God. God is the creator and we are the creature. We are the creature. We're not God. We didn't make ourselves. God is an entity that is all-knowing, all-powerful, and by the way, one of the other attributes of God is that He's good. We're not, my friend, we're not good. As Jesus said, there is none good but God. And the Bible talks about that quite a, quite a bit. So, God made us, and He made us not good. And as long as we have our relationship with Him correct, which is that He's God and we're not, and He's good and we're not, then my way of looking at it is that He's more or less obliged to forgive us. And then He works with us in our mind. That's what we're here for. Teaches us right from wrong corrects our hearts, by the way, and begins to impart His goodness in us. But it's still His goodness, you know? It doesn't become our goodness because it's His goodness. So, yes, He forgives our sins as long as we have our relationship right. Now, why doesn't He forgive our sins if we don't have our relationship right? Well, the problem is that if you don't understand that He's God and that we are the creature, He is the creator and we are the creature, or in other places it says, He's the potter and we're the pot. We're the clay vessel. We're made out of dirt. But if we and we do it because we're not good, we assume that we are the God in our badness or lack of goodness. We, and that relationship is incorrect. We think that we can save ourselves because we, without realizing it many times, think that we're the God. We're God. Well, as long as we think we're God, no, He won't remove your sins as far as the west, as far as the east from the west. It's not that he, He's a bad God, it's just that He can't do it until we let Him do it. If we're trying to do it ourselves, then you're not forgiven. Because, see, only goodness can forgive badness or lack of goodness. So as long as we're trying to forgive ourselves or either deny that we do are in sin or that God is good and we're not, then our sin remains. When we get that relationship right and ask Him for forgiveness as the only one that can do it, then He'll do it. And He'll begin then, or maybe He does it before that. Maybe He has to work on us before we ever ask Him. But if, it, if you're doing anything good, it's because He's given you some goodness or He's loaning you His goodness. The benefits of being forgiven? Well, one thing, it, it, it gives you peace of mind. We're all bad. We do all kind of stuff. And we need to be forgiven. We need to know that we're forgiven so that we can let the past be past 
and that so that we can go on with our lives and do our best not to do these things anymore. This is a very important scripture that speaks to the relationship between ourselves and God and I suppose there could be a million sermons preached on this by a million different preachers and each one of them would have his own take on it and they would probably all be correct. All right, this is Steve Coleman at Spirit Woodshop, and uh, I hope that you uh, got something from this. Signing off.